says his district has enough school psychologist positions to meet basic requirements, but with an increase in special education students, psychologists there are spread thin. Two-thirds of school psychologists surveyed by the State School Board Association say their district does not have enough psychologists to meet students' needs, according to the report. The report comes at a crucial time for youth mental health across the country. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for people ages 10 to 24, and opioid-related visits to doctors by school-aged children in New York have more than doubled since 2010. The report does make some recommendations for local districts, including partnering with community organizations that focus on mental health, increasing the visibility of their job openings, and focusing outreach efforts in minority populations. Brett Dahlberg, WXXI News. Local experts on dyslexia say schools should offer more social and emotional supports for students. People with dyslexia often have difficulty reading, spelling, and making connections between sounds and letters. Courtney Hathaway is a school social worker who has the learning disorder. She says many children are embarrassed about having this, and it's important to help them understand why they are struggling. Who's going to enjoy getting calls from the police? There's nothing wrong with you. Your brain thinks differently. Now that we know that, that's why we're going to put these accommodations or supports into place. A lot of times I see students not openly accepting the accommodations or wanting the help because they don't understand why you're giving it to them. Hathaway was a guest on WXXI's Connections with Evan Dawson. It's now 545. Support for NPR comes from this station and from American Jewish World Service, working together for more than 30 years to build a more just and equitable world. Learn more at ajws.org. From FJC, a foundation of donor-advised funds, working to maximize the impact of charitable giving and to create customized philanthropic solutions. Learn more at fjc.org. And from the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, NPR advanced journalistic excellence in the digital age. This is Morning Edition from NPR News. I'm David Green. And I'm Rachel Martin. Today is the first day of work for New Hampshire's 400 member House of Representatives. Among the many new faces will be 19 year old Cassandra Lovett. She got involved in state politics a few years ago, motivated to change the child marriage laws in her state that allow girls as young as 13 to be married. Lovett worked with the state legislator and the state agreed to raise the marriage age to 16. Cassandra Lovett wasn't satisfied though. She wants the marriage age raised to 18. So she ran for state office and won. She told me why this issue has moved her the way it has. The big problem is they wound up in abusive situations, not having any money to their name. They were just stuck in this situation and they don't know how to get out. How did this turn into you running for a seat on the state legislature? One of the representatives that I met is Representative Ellen Reed from New Market, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And she has been a mentor for me since I decided to run. She suggested that you do 